Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to today's edition of Intuitive Angling, and thanks a lot for swinging by the channel to check out the video today. Really appreciate it. And guys, today I'm going to share with you a secret that a lot, or actually the majority of the Bassmaster Elite Series pros and the Bass Pro Tier pros are keeping from the public. We're going to have a little uh, conversation on that and sort of get also curious to get your guys' opinion after we get done talking about it, what you guys think about this. Um, also, guys, before we get started here, just a couple quick housekeeping tips to keep the lights on here in the tackle room. Just like to invite everybody, if you hadn't had a chance, to please hit that subscribe button to hear Intuitive Angling. It's a good way to support the channel. And if you guys out there are fans of the channel and you want to support the channel, the best way you can do it is to uh, buy your tackle through my Tackle Warehouse link that I put in the description of every video. If you guys uh, uh, use that link and bookmark that link to purchase your tackle, uh, the channel gets a small percentage of the commission on anything you buy, so that's a good way to show your support if you're inclined to do so. So much appreciated there. Okay, guys, this is a sort of a continuing conversation on the whole anti-live scope uh, crusade I've been on here. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue doing this as long as as long as live scope is remaining to be legal in the tournaments, unfortunately, this is a conversation that we have to have because it has such a, it's having such a huge derogatory negative impact on the sport that we can't just, we, we can never become complacent with it and we can't ever normalize it. We can't do that because when you normalize something that is destructive to the sport as forward facing sonar, you're just, you're, you're, you're leading yourself down a dark path that we're, we're heading down right now. So uh, from that standpoint, we're always gonna be talking about this. Now here's the secret guys that they're all keeping from you. Bassmaster Elite Series Pros and Bass Pro Tour Pros. And you're beginning to see the cracks in the armor a little bit because I'll give you guys a prime example. If you guys saw Kevin Van Dam's interview on Dave Mercer last week, or if you watched uh, Mike Iaconelli's uh, podcast in his bar there, both of them are talking about how they're basically disgruntled and they don't like the fact that we have forward-facing sonar in the tournaments, but they accept it. And they, it's, it's like they don't like it, but they accept it for the way it is, um, which again, that's a level of complacency that I would wish they would just get on the right side of the fence and just come out all against it. Because you can, you can imagine if Kevin Van Dam and Mike Iaconelli both came out full force against forward-facing sonar, the allies we would have with that. But regardless, they both make the same argument. Nobody wants to watch it on television. Nobody likes what it's doing to the sport. Nobody really likes the direction it's taking the sport. Yet we've become, we've become complacent in accepting the fact that that's just the, the natural progression, which it's not. Now, here's what they're talking about, guys, that I want to share with you because I've got a lot of friends that fish the Bassmaster Elite Series circuit and the Bass Pro Tour. And guys, I ha I'm, I'm in constant communication with my buddies there. And I've been talking to them a lot lately, the last couple of weeks. And it is unbelievable how they're sharing the stories with me about how the majority of the Bassmaster Elite Series pros and the majority of the Bass Pro Tour pros don't like forward-facing sonar. They don't like the direction it's taking the sport. They don't like how it's transforming the sport. Yet they are reluctant to come out in full force because they don't want to be labeled in whatever fashion from their fans or from the sponsors or the tournament organization as a troublemaker or they, they they just don't want the attention that like people like myself are you know taking the brunt of coming out against this forward-facing sonar so basically what they're here's here's what's happened with it Here, here's why they're starting to lose patience after every tournament it's like when it first came out you know and when it first started being a factor in the tournaments a couple of years ago it's been out longer than that but it's only been since the evolution of these really advanced transducers that are basically leaving no place for the fish to hide whatsoever as this progression takes place more and more every single tournament that they're losing patience with it because well, here's a prime example of what i'm talking about one of the one of my friends that has that has really come out against it big time here recently and he's talking about everybody else that's disgruntled about it he is a multiple bass time, multiple Bassmaster tournament winner, tournament winner, multiple Forest Cup tournament winner, um, qualified for countless Bassmasters Classics and Forest Woods Cups. And what they are realizing, it's like all of the work that they have done their entire career. They worked 
for decades and decades and decades to perfect their craft and learn about fishing, understand fish movement, understand fish behavior, everything about that. They, they, have, they have devoted their lifetime in perfecting their craft and their art of professional fishing, and it's worthless now. It doesn't mean anything out there because they are getting beat by these 20-year-olds that don't know anything about bass fishing except for how to decipher blips on a video game screen, and they're admitting that. They, they admit that they can't compete against that, even the people that use it and understand it because they don't commit to it. Now, here's what they're talking about is, is the frustration. It's like, you got, let's say you've got this veteran Elite Series Pro that has won millions of dollars in tournaments and won lots of tournaments out there, and they're trying to, they're, they're trying to incorporate spotlighting into the game plan because they've been forced to do so by Bassmaster and MLF. But the problem they have is they cannot, they can't do it because they go out there and they try it and they practice with it and they catch some fish with it, but they still cannot compete against a 20 year old that doesn't know anything about bass fishing because they are unable to make that commitment. When you're somebody like Mike Iaconelli or Kevin Van Dam or anyone like that, you have so much knowledge and experience that if you go out and try to spotlight for bass for a couple hours and it's not working out, you wanna to go to the bank or you wanna to go to the traditional bass fishing techniques that have produced millions of dollars of wins for you over the years. And when they do that, they take themselves out of contention for the tournament because you got the, the 20 year old out there, the 20 year old flat brimmer out there that doesn't know anything about bass movement and behavior. And they're, they're locked in and 100% completely focused on spotlighting because they don't know how to do anything else. That is why they are getting their butts kicked. And that is why the majority of these pros that I'm talking about are coming out and they're losing patience with it because they see the writing on the wall. Here's what's gonna happen. And all you guys out there, you know, I love you, Mike Iaconelli. I love all the guys out there out there. But what's gonna happen is unless you start standing up against this and start becoming forceful and aggressive in getting this made illegal, all of your careers are going to become irrelevant. You can't compete with them. You can't, I don't care how many Bassmasters Classic somebody's won or whatever, you cannot compete against a 20 year old that doesn't know anything else about fishing because they've committed to that. And therefore they understand and they see every tournament now that they're, this is causing their careers to be irrelevant. I've got another buddy of mine that has won Bass Angler of the Year, won several tournaments, just millions of dollars in tournaments. And it's the same way. It's like he had, over the past six months, there's been a shift. It's like at first, this particular friend of mine was, was, was open to incorporating forward facing sonar into their fishing. But what's happened with him and majority of the pros out there is they realize that they're seeing the dark side of it now because they can't use it. It doesn't work for them to compete against that. It doesn't make any difference how much time they spend on it. You can't, you can't make that switch in your fishing if you're a veteran pro out there. And it's transforming the sport to where within the next couple of years, guys, you are gonna see the Bassmaster Elite Series and the, ba the Bass Pro Tour as the, as they start cutting people and eliminate people, it's basically going to look like a high school college tournament. All the Bassmaster Elite Series, all the Bass Pro Tour, if they start with their cuts, they're going to be replaced by these 20 year old, and I don't mean to be sound derogatory. If you're a 20 year old flat brimmer, good for you. I'm not, you're out here fishing. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. You've been put in this position by the tournament organizations. It's not your fault. If you're a 20 year old flat brimmer live scoper and don't know how to do anything else, I blame Bassmaster and I blame MLF for, for putting you in the position to have to do that. So I wanna make that clear. This, all of this lies on the shoulder of Bassmaster and MLF by not doing the right thing and being beholden to the electronic companies. And I, I hear a lot of, some of my buddies say, well, you hear them say, it's like, well, the electronic companies, they have the best interest in the sport. They wanna see it successful. I call BS on that because if they really wanted to see the sport maintain its tradition and heritage and long-term sustainability, they would not be promoting forward-facing sonar and the advancing technology above that as they are right now. So what you're seeing here right now is you're starting to see 
the cracks in the armor appear because the majority of the mainstream professional angling community out there is becoming more vocal, more impatient, and more against forward-facing sonar after every freaking tournament. And you've seen it all year long, guys. Every tournament, including the Bassmaster Classic, has been one forward-facing sonar spotlight. And every tournament's going to get one like that. You know, one, you're going to have a, a rare exception once in a while where the, all the planets line up perfectly and some guy may, want, may win a tournament, not spotlighting, but it's going to be a rarity. As the technology advances, as the technology, if they, as they allow the technology to be used to advance it and like to incorporate it not only in offshore fishing, but in shallow water fishing, it's going to be a complete takeover of the sport. And all the hammers out there, like Mike Iaconelli and the legends of the sport, their careers are going to become irrelevant because of forward-facing sonar. That is the reality of the situation. So when you, when you have a majority of the hammers out there that finally are seeing the writing on the wall that I've been screaming about for two years, and they're finally getting impatient and they're fed up with it, maybe this is going to be enough to turn the tide. And... Bassmaster MLF, if you guys are listening to me, and when you make the uh, when you make the inevitable, uh, when you start to regulate this forward-facing sonar, which you're going to have to do that, do not make the half measure and say we're going to we're going to allow it for half the tournaments in the year, and we're not going to allow it for the other half, or we're going to use it in the comp tournament competition. We're not going to allow it, or you're going to only have one live scope unit in tournament competition. You're not going to have to have, you're not going to be allowed to have five transducers. Don't put the half measures in there. Do the right thing, stand up, grow a pair, grow a spine, and say, we are not allowing forward-facing sonar in our tournaments. And preferably no 360, just like with the Touring Anglers Association. And come out with the fact and say, you guys are gonna have to rely on your skills as a bass angler. And you're gonna have to use traditional bass fishing skills, and you're gonna have to fish to find fish. You're not going to use forward-facing sonar as an umbilical cord and a crutch to show you where to fish at. That's not how we're gonna do this. We're going back to the way fishing used to be. And once we get to that point, guys, the clouds are gonna part. It's gonna become a great day in the sport of bass fishing. And we're gonna look back upon this dark period that we're in right now, the forward facing sonar era. And we're gonna to say to ourselves down the road, what the hell we were doing? What were we thinking by doing this? But you're starting to see a change a little bit. You know, people are getting fed up with it. Top pros are getting fed up with it. And when you start to have some type of a, of a, of a unification amongst the professional angling community and everybody stands up and starts being adults in the room and doing the right thing, that's when you're going to see a real change in the sport for the better. So let me know what you guys think. We'll talk later.